it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shina, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. Brethren, I want to assure you that as this happened, so it is happening in your life. There is a royal decree. There is an instruction given. Go and gather of the king's seed. Hallelujah. You are of the king's seed. The potential to be a son has been planted in you. Hallelujah. God is aware of that potential. And he has been tapping upon it. May we come to fullness in the name of Jesus. Conditions were given. Verse 4. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, skillful in wisdom, cunning in knowledge, understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. From this, do we think if an earthly king has standards for what he wants, do we think God has no standard? Do we think God will take anything? You know, at times, I have this impression that we think, well, is God, is my father, whatever I throw at him, he should take. He has no option. Shouldn't that be the case? Anything we throw at God, he should take. Of course not. There was an instruction. Children appropriately tuned. No blemish. Well favored. Skillful in wisdom. Cunning in knowledge. Understanding science. Such as that ability. Hallelujah. You know it's important. The day that wisdom is called for from you. May you not bring foolishness out. Hallelujah. God will not be glorified by certain things. And that's the reason why we are saying we need to cry before the Lord. Every area of ministry there is the need for improvement. There must be growth. It can't be as it was in the beginning, is now and shall ever be world without end. No. The Bible says study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that will not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. Says the king appointed them a daily provision. You will eat the king's meat. You will drink the king's wine. That's that king not our king. And the idea is, they will be nourished for three years. That at the end, they might stand before the king. Hallelujah. There were many others, but there were four Hebrew children. Verse 8. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat. Now with the wine which he drank. Hallelujah. Brethren, we are in the world. But we are not of the world. Hallelujah. We are where? In the world. But we are not of the world. You know, I remember reading the history books about some of the priests and the monks that lived many years ago. Many of them believers, they did not want to be defiled by the people on the earth. So, many we hear went to look for places far removed from where most people lived. They dug caves, they found isolated places, 
where they could live so that they can worship God without defilement. Hallelujah. Isn't that a very perfect way of letting our light shine? To go and lock ourselves in some isolated place where Satan cannot come. Can Satan come to an isolated cave where you lock yourself and you stay? Can Satan come there? So it's not about isolating yourself. The instruction was, you will be in the king's palace. You will undergo training. The king's meat will be offered you. The drink will be offered you. But it's now up to you to tell yourself, I am not of the spirit that rules in these other people. I am a different person. Hallelujah. Says Daniel proposed. It was one of the things the Lord used to minister to me many years ago. That God can take you anywhere. He can move you to any height. But the key issue is you have to make up your mind. I will not defile myself. There is a consecration upon my life. I will not be distracted. My progress is not going to be the way others make progress. I will not do what others do. I will not eat what they eat. I will not drink what they drink. Hallelujah. Then he said, I will not eat what they eat. I will not drink what they drink. But God will still be glorified in my life. The evidence of his keeping grace and power will still be seen in me. As we will read. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Daniel proposed in his heart, he will not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat and what they drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. He says, now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. May God bring us into favor and tender love with those who can make a difference in our lives. In the name of Jesus, wherever we meet them, Hallelujah. God can bring his favor upon your life. And we must desire such favor. Particularly as we live in the earth. Even though we are not of the earth. Hallelujah. Says the priest of the eunuch said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king. He had appointed your meat and your drink. Why should he see your faces worse liking that the children are of your sort? Then shall you make me endanger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melza, whom the prince of the eunuchs has set over Daniel, Ananiah, and so on, Prove thy servants, I beseech you, ten days, and let them give us pause to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee. And the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, and as thou seest, deal with thy servant. That was a challenge. May we be provoked to this challenge. That the fact that I decide I will live right, the fact that I decide I will live as God wants me to live, does not mean my life should be miserable. My life should not be miserable because I have chosen to serve God. The word was, they will eat of the king's meat. They will drink of his wine. We will eat something else. We will eat of the faithfulness of God. We will eat of God's provision. But... Our lives will not be miserable. Hallelujah. So prove us. And many of us are going through this period of proving. This period of testing. But let us not get used to the misery. Let us not get used to our heads being bowed. Because one of the things that I, I believe is that when we say men will come to inquire of us, they are going to inquire, how do we make the word of God work for us? Now, the issue is, the word that you have not been able to make work for yourself, it will be difficult to make it work for somebody else. Hallelujah. You know, the last person I had trying to make that attempt is the seven sons of Skiva. Have you heard about them? You know, they had been observing Paul, casting out spirits, you know, out of people. 
And they thought, what is the big deal? In the name of Jesus, come out. Is that not what Paul was doing? So, they saw this person who needed to be delivered. And the account says, they, they walked to him. In Jesus' name, we cast you out. In Jesus' name, we cast you out. And I'm sure the, the man must have, or the, the spirit must have been a bit patient. Let me see whether they are serious or, or, or not. And after a while, say, hey, I should go out in the name of Jesus. The Jesus you don't know. Okay. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? And that's a very big question. Who are you? And in identifying who we are, we really need to identify ourselves with the word of God. The word of God has to work for us. One of the cries of my heart, Lord, any area of my life where the word has not been working, teach me how to make the word work. Hallelujah. It's not about presumption. It's not about arrogance. It's not about telling yourself, I know. You can tell yourself you know. Where you will meet what will tell you you don't know, you will meet it. Hallelujah. But you can go to God and say, God, I don't know. Teach me. A brother was saying that faith is not somebody coming and saying, hey, all those who want to be this. I say, hey, I want to be it. I, I, I claim it. You might claim today, claim tomorrow, and claim long after that, and it may not come to pass. Faith is agreeing with God. Faith is going to God and saying, God, what do you want to do in this matter? How do you want to go in this matter? What do you want to do? How do we go about this particular, you know, business? And God saying, this is my mind. This is the way. Walk ye in it. And as you receive that, then you, 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 you move out and say, even as heaven has declared that this is so, earth pronounces it to be so. And then it will come to pass. Hallelujah. But the Bible says, Daniel said, prove us. Prove us. Ten days. May the Lord take frustration out of our lives. May he take it out of our experiences. May he bring practicality, the reality of the truth of God's word into our experiences in the name of Jesus. So he consented to them, verse 14, in this matter. And he proved them ten days. Our proving has a definite date. It has a terminal date. It's not an ongoing thing forever. Hallelujah. Whatever you are going through, ask a terminal date. As you will go to the Lord, Lord, how do we go about this business? That period of testing, that period of trial. You know, God will bring circumstances, will bring situations into our lives. You overcome one, and you know, another one might come. That's why a lot of times when a couple is getting married, I usually tell them, I wish I could pray that may your path not have any challenges, but I will be deceiving you if I tell you that. It will not be so. But I can pray, may you overcome whatever comes your way. Because things will come your way. It's a biblical principle. It says, two houses in building. One was built on sandy foundation. The other was built on a solid foundation. The rains came on both. The winds blew on both. Hallelujah. But only one came down. The one that came down was the one that was not built on the word of God. May we build on the word of God. May we build on the assurance that we receive from the mouth of the Father in the name of Jesus. He says, at the end of ten days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh. Those were the days when people wanted to be fatter in flesh. Now, maybe it might be a different one. But whichever way it is, people should know God is visiting you. God is helping you. May God visit us. May he help us. May his hand be rested upon us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. They appeared fairer. They appeared fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. And then they took away the meat and the wine 
that they should drink. Verse 17, as for these four children, because they were true, because they tested God's word, they stood on his word, they stood for God. He says, as for them, God gave them knowledge. He gave them skill in all learning, in all wisdom. And Daniel in particular had understanding in all visions and dreams. Hallelujah. Now at the end of the days, that the king has said he will bring them in. Then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them. And among them all was found none like Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. No king brings untested people before him. No king allows people who have nothing to offer before him. Our cry must be, Lord, equip me. Grant me wisdom. Grant me knowledge. Equip me. Holy Spirit, lead me. Walk in me. That when I stand, you know, you go through the scriptures. You look at Elijah. And it said, Elijah said, there shall be no rain according to my word. At times I look at that and I say, what boldness. What is it boldness of effrontery? According to my word, there will be no rain in the land. And he didn't declare it in a private place where if it didn't come to pass, nobody would say, ah, but your word fell to the ground. He went before everybody. I said, according to my word, there will be no rain. Now, when you look at how much he prayed before rain was now restored, I'm tempted to think before he came forward and said, according to my word, there will be no rain. There might have been a lot of prayer. Lord, let not my word fall to the ground. This is the word of God. According to my word, as the Lord has ministered to me, there will be no rain. And God backed that word. He put power in the word, and there was no rain. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the times that are coming upon the earth, they are times that bring fear. They are times that make people panic. And the panic is of the such that will cause people to be looking upon the things that, hey, another one has up. Oh, another one is coming. Hey. Hallelujah. Well, the word of God says, when you see those things, don't look at the things that are happening. Lift up your head. Look unto God. And say, Lord, let your word come to pass. That which you have promised concerning me. That which you have promised concerning us. Let it come to pass. Let your word not fall to the ground. Hallelujah. It shall come to pass. He says, watch and pray. Watch. The watching is not watch the evil things that are going on. Like one of our brethren said earlier on, receive instruction even before the thing happens and know what he wants you to do. Hallelujah. As you watch and you see, pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape the disappointments, the failures, the sighing, the mourning, the crying of those days. And it's like, while many are sighing and crying, your head is lifted up, and you know, you stand before him. You stand before him. You know, a lot of times when I look at the scriptures, I am encouraged by the things I see. You know, the, the Bible says, we we'll say this and then begin to pray. That a time in Israel, you know, we mentioned it uh, a few days ago, the time of the famine, when there was a famine in the land, that we said, one woman called the other and said, let's kill your child today, we'll kill my own tomorrow. And the king in the land was walking on the wall. And somebody cried, help, O king. And the king said, what are you saying? But where is the help to come from? If God does not help you, you know, where will you find help? I don't have any help to offer you. Hallelujah. But the Bible says at such a time, Elisha was in his house. And he was playing court. Now I was asking myself, 
was Elisha in a situation where he also would have needed to kill one of his sons? Or if there was no son to kill, you know, maybe take one of the servants and kill him so that he too will be able to eat. Was that the state of Elisha? Elisha was relaxed. Elisha was there. It was like something was going on in the land. It was the outworking of God. And he was not going to be moved by what he was seeing. And when the time came, the account says he rose up and said, Thus say the Lord, this time tomorrow, this time tomorrow, there will be a change. And another person who was not linked, you know, to the word of God, to the mind of God, said, eh, if God were to open the windows of heaven, will this thing be? Can it come to pass? It's not logical. It does not make sense. Nobody has ever seen such a thing. That there will be a visitation, a whole nation, where there had been a great scarcity, that there will now be enough to feed everyone. Say, so forget it. It cannot be so. And, you know, the word went to him, it will be, but you will not partake of it. Because you are not linked rightly. You are not hearing as you should hear. Your eyes are not where they ought to be. Hallelujah. Brethren, I want us to bow our heads as we begin to talk to the Lord. The times we are in are times of focus. They are times of watchfulness. They are times of prayerfulness. They are times of diligence. Diligence. Obedience. The sons of Rechab, they were obedient. Their father told them, you must live like strangers. You must live like pilgrims. Your life must be focused. Don't get dragged into the cares of life. Don't get into drunkenness. Don't get into surfeiting. Recognize that you are different. And they took their father at his word. And God was so confident about them that he told Jeremiah, go and call them. Bring them into the house of the Lord. Put wine on the table. Tell them to start drinking. And he said, look, what are you saying? I can't do this. This is not who I am. I cannot drink this. Our fathers told us we should not drink this. And we are not disobedient. Our father told us we should not live our lives this way. And we are not disobedient. And God said, for this, there shall not lack Rahab, a son to stand before me forever and ever. Hallelujah. May that be our experience. Not only that we will be counted worthy to reign with him, but it will run from us to our children in the name of Jesus.